loves, welcome to a new pick a card reading. Today we are going to be finding out what are they realizing about you. So this can be your specific person, your twin flame, your soulmate, your beloved, your crush. What are they realizing about their feelings for you? What would they say to you from their higher self? And what actions would they like to take next towards you? Those are all the things that we're going to be covering. So if you're new to this channel, welcome. I am Dr. V. It's my absolute passion and purpose to be doing these readings for you. And if you like your reading today, the best way that you could support this channel, which is absolutely free to you as well, is to hit that subscribe button. Join this incredible community. Get active in the comment section because everybody's very supportive. And also give this video a like because that tells YouTube that we have a message of love and light here that is worth sharing and spreading. So thank you so much for being here and for your support. So today I have three options for you in terms of how to pick your group. You can pick number one, number two, number three, or you can pick them all, take the messages that resonate for you, or you can go by zodiac sign because once we go through each one, we're also going to be assigning zodiac signs to each group. Now you can choose your own zodiac sign, you can choose your partners, or you can choose both, or you can choose from these crystals. So you have many options here. So be gentle with yourself and just know that this is a general reading and not everything may resonate. But if you're at that point where you really want specific guidance on what is going on in your unique and special journey with your person, then I recommend you have the live reading experience with me. I'm one of the few people who offers this because I just love to see your beautiful face on video call. It's really transformative because of that live connection. It's very healing and spirit can answer all of your questions right there in real time. Now I also offer video recorded readings. So if you go to livetarot.com forward slash readings, you can see my entire reading menu right there. So go ahead and take a deep breath and see which of these you feel most guided to. For group number one, we have the tiger's eye and the groundhog spirit, time to let go. This one's so cute. I love groundhogs. They're so adorable. For group number two, we have the eagle spirit. Spirit has your back. And this is the red jasper. And for group number three, we have the giraffe spirit. See the big picture. And this is the orange citrine. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and assign zodiac signs. So what do we have here for group number one? We have Capricorn. We have Libra. We have Sagittarius. And we have Pisces. For group number two, we have Cancer, we have a Virgo, we have Aries, and we have Taurus. And for group number three, we have Scorpio, Gemini, Aquarius, and Leo. Okay, so go ahead and make your selection and we will get started here with group number one. All right, my beautiful group number one that chose the tiger's eye, the groundhog spirit, and Capricorn, Libra, Sagittarius, and Pisces, but don't be limited by those signs. That's just to help some people choose. So let's see. What are they realizing about you, group one? So 
So we're going to start with your oracle cards. Then we will do your tarot. So we'll also be looking at what would they say to you from their higher self if they could. And that is especially helpful for those of you who might be, you know, in some sort of separation. And then we will end with what action, if any, do they wish to take next towards you? And stay till the end because we'll also be getting final advice from spirit. Like what advice does spirit have for you today for this reading and for this situation? Discovering truth. You stand in the light of truth to the sea. Childhood innocence. Heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. So I feel like this person is definitely realizing some very deep and emotional things here, I think. I, I just, I don't know, I'm feeling a wave of emotion right now. It's almost like this person has been suppressing emotions for you for a long time, okay? And I feel like it de depending, there's a ver variety of reasons for this, okay? It depends on your specific situation but for some of you this person has been suppressing their feelings for you because they are not available to be with you okay either they are not emotionally available or they're not physically available to be with you or it's both right like they're not physically available they could be with somebody else they could be in a different situation or they could even be long distance from you and feeling that gap and on top of it they could definitely have some emotional problems that are coming from their childhood. Okay, so this person, they may or may not have said this to you, but their childhood was very significant. In their childhood, they feel that they lost their innocence. Okay, they have some sort of childhood drama, drama or trauma. Um, and there's a part of them that has always stayed this age, okay? There's a part of them that has not been able to move on emotionally from this time period, from this age. So there is a childlike quality that this person has. And what's ironic about this is that it may have been the very reason why you were attracted to each other. Because I feel group one, you also have this childlike quality. And so you may have fallen for each other based on being able to see the inner child or accept the inner child within each of you. I feel like when, when this person has realized that when they're around you, when they're talking to you, when they're connecting with you, they feel that that inner child, that, that wounded child within them is somehow satisfied, is somehow seen, is somehow understood in a way that they weren't back then. So I feel like the, the thing about this situation that's coming up is that there's something about this connection that this person has had a hard time even talking about or admitting to themselves because of this issue right here. They cannot understand or they don't know how to process the fact that there's something about you that is bringing up deep things in them, okay? And they may or may not be ready to confront those things. And this is why they've realized that maybe they haven't been able to have the kind of heart-to-heart -heart conversations with you that they want to have, okay? And you might always feel like this person is holding back. You know, this person, like you feel like you get so close to them fully opening up and talking to you, but then at that last second, they just draw back. And so I feel that there is definitely a lot of frustration in this energy between the two of you. Okay. You might be very frustrated because you feel like you guys can get so close and then they pull back, right? Because they can't, you know, they can't really, um, they, they only have a certain 
limit of vulnerability and intimacy that they can come to and then they start to feel very overwhelmed they start to feel very um, uncomfortable okay so this person that is why what happens is that as you guys get closer to the truth and I feel like between the two of you the problem is the truth feels very buried and I feel part of the reason for the truth feeling very buried and you not being able to stand in the light of the truth is because of this person's constant kind of problem with opening up to you. Okay, so they, they are slowly realizing this as well is that they, you know, inside they want to open up to you, they want to be close to you, but when those moments arise, they step back from the truth. Okay, so there is a truth in this person that they are very slowly discovering. Okay, and this process has been painfully slow. This person is not somebody who does things very quickly. This person is someone who often needs solitude and a lot of space. If you look at this image right here, it's very much this go to sea. What is the whole thing about going to the sea? It's really about being alone with your own nature, with either nature around you or alone within your own nature. And this, if you look at this person, they're very solitary, right? They're very, they're, they're reflecting in solitude. So this person might be the kind of person who um, gets very overwhelmed by their own emotions. And so has a hard time having these heart to heart conversations, even though they might want to have that with you. But again, I feel like the realization for them in terms of asking themselves, what is the truth? What is it that they truly feel? That realization has been very slow in coming. Okay, and so I can feel that from you there is a level of frustration, there's a level of impatience, and I don't, I don't, um, you know, blame you for that at all, group one. Like, I can totally understand why getting to know this person has felt like a very slow and painful process, and yet you feel incredibly drawn to them, you feel incredibly connected to them, even though you feel that the progress is slow. And I feel like they are realizing this as well, but very slowly, that at some point they're gonna have to admit the truth, or they're gonna have to stand in the light of the truth, they're gonna have to, uh, um, admit what is the truth of their actual feelings because I feel like this person has not been able to truly admit what their actual feelings are to you so they are starting to realize that at some point there's going to have to be a decision either they pull back and you guys end this because it's going nowhere or they're going to have to come forward and have a true heart-to-heart -heart conversation they're going to have to truly tell you what they feel what they actually feel about you. And again, I feel like it's very hard for them because there's this inner child in them that feel feels so drawn to you as well. I think both of your inner children feel very, very drawn to each other, but the adult side, the side that's been through trauma, the side that's been through heartbreak and disappointment, the, those sides are having a hard time coming out, okay? Those sides are having a hard time merging with that innocence, you know, that sense of trust. Part of this childhood innocence is also that, you know, there's a sense of trust there. And at some point, this person realized that they couldn't trust, right? Like something in their childhood made their trust go away. So now they don't trust that relationships, even if they are, you know, very loving, even if they feel very close to you, if they want to open up to you, there's a lack of trust in this person that it will work out. You know, they feel like ultimately it always ends. You know, things always end. Things are never um, satisfying. Okay. This is this person's fear. This is what this person always kind of lives with is they feel that they disappoint. Okay. They disappoint. Ultimately, they're going to disappoint you. Ultimately, they're not going to be able to fulfill your emotional needs. You know, and that is their fear that that if they were to completely they're realizing that part of standing in the light of this truth is also realizing that, yeah, they're afraid that if they completely give over to this feeling, this attraction that they have for you, that what if they disappoint you somehow? What if they're not able to meet your needs? The chariot. Ace of Cups. The Empress. So beautiful. Wow. Very beautiful energy. 
So see, this is where I feel like they are realizing, okay? They're coming to, like I said, a very slow realization that they are going to have to do something to move this relationship forward because there is a bit of a stuck energy here, right? They, they, they've been very painfully slow. Um, like I said, it with this person, it almost feels like two steps forward, three steps back, right? Two steps forward, three steps back. So I feel like underneath their fears and their hesitation is this deep desire for emotional intimacy, okay? I feel like this person does, even though they seem to be very, sometimes very solitary, they seem to be, you know, going off into their cave a lot, they seem to withdraw a lot, but uh, it's such an uh, unfortunate contradiction because deep down inside they do want this ace of cups they do want to feel emotionally close to you and and they do want to feel that they can open up to you and i feel like it's really an emotional struggle for them because this is how they see you they see you as the empress energy as the possibility of something new and beautiful it this is about creation abundance i feel like this person is so used to limiting the flow of love to themselves that when they are now that they have met somebody like you who is truly in this empress energy who's willing to give in abundance who is willing to love in abundance they don't know what to do because they're so used to lack they're so used to just getting the lowest amount of anything. But unfortunately, when you're used to only getting the lowest amount of anything, you're also becoming used to giving the least amount, right? So you may feel, group one, that this person is only giving you the bare minimum. And even when you say, hey, like, I want more of you, I want more of this, they may even tell you, okay, this is all I can give you. Uh, now what? You know, this is all I can give you. I can't give you more than this. So I feel like this person is starting to get really afraid that, you know, their limitations and what they feel they can give um, is not moving this forward. And that, again, ultimately, you might say, you know what? I love you. I really do. I love you dearly. I want so much for us to have this, but I may have to move on. You know, they're afraid of this. They're realizing that at some point, if they don't step up and, and you know, be able to have that heart to heart conversation and give you what you truly want, need and deserve the fool that you're going to, you know, you're going to have to leave them behind. And, and you're going to have to continue on your journey. You're going to have to continue um, on your next adventure. Like between the fool and the chariot, I feel like this person is realizing that ultimately, if they don't step up, you will move on. You will have to move on. Even if you don't, you may not want to move on. You know, you may love this person dearly. And, but yet you may have spent a lot of time trying to understand them. You hurt me. Everything that happened hurt me so much. I need more time to heal. So this is a special message for some of you who, you know, you may have already had this fallout with this person. You may have said, you know, like I, I really gave you everything I could. I can't give any more. I've done everything. And yet you, you don't do anything to move this forward. And then they may have took this as a hurtful rejection. So take it as it resonates for your situation. I know we've been together in past lives. I recognize you. You were never a stranger to me. Yeah, I feel like this definitely is a past life connection. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. That's probably part of the reason why you get this childhood innocence. Like you, they feel very seen and understood by you and they don't even know why. You may feel very seen and understood by them and you don't know why. So there is some sort of a definite past life relationship and past life familiarity here. So let's see, is there any action spirit that this person wishes to take towards group one? And here is final advice. What is spirit's final advice for group one? Forgive. fall creativity so this is another empress energy card so i do feel that there is some hope here 
Okay, there is some hope here because we're getting change and creation and forgiveness. So I feel like if you are in some sort of struggle or separation with this person or you guys have just been going through a bad cycle where you're having a really hard time, I feel that there's also a sense of miscommunication that has gone on lately a lot as well. Um, so I feel like if you've been um, in a, a misunderstanding or miscommunication where both of you just feel very defeated, you feel like, oh my gosh, we've tried this every every way we can. Why does it never work? I, I do feel that there is a change in that energy because there may be some mutual forgiveness here. There may be an opportunity where both of you can have that heartfelt conversation and mutually forgive the misunderstandings and the pain of the immediate past in order to move forward you could take this fall as a time marker if it is fall currently where you live um, that this fall things are going to change but it doesn't even have to be a, a fall marker because a, a, a time marker because fall also just is an energy of change so there's a definite energy of forgiveness change and then creativity look at the progression here it's actually quite beautiful right first you guys forgive each other put the past in the past, focus on positive changes that you can make in order to bridge the distance between the two of you and then create something beautiful which goes back to that empress energy. So I love that, okay? There is hope here. There is a chance here for positive change. Oh my gosh, look at your final advice open up to change so here we're getting that again so i do feel there's some really significant and beautiful shifts coming in this relationship so if you'd like to have a personal reading with me you could do the live or the video recorded you can also order any of the oracle decks that i've created and used in this reading they're all on amazon fba so free shipping they're also on a great sale right now twenty dollars each so make sure you check that out. All of the links are in the box below and also check out livetarot.com. If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe and give this video a like. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you all on the next one. Two that chose the Eagle Spirit and the Red Jasper. <clears throat> Jasper. As well as Cancer, Virgo, Taurus, and Aries. Although, please don't feel limited by those signs. That's just to help some people choose. So we are going to start with your oracle. And then we will do your tarot. We're going to look at what are they realizing about you. We'll also look at what would they say to you from their higher self if they could. And that's going to be... Very useful if you guys are in separation. And then we will end with what action do they wish to take towards you, as well as final advice from Spirit. What advice does Spirit have uh, for you today for this reading? Finding Sanctuary, opening to your spiritual source. All that glitters. New Moon, promise. And stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. Okay, so I feel like there is a strong spiritual energy that is coming through here and I feel like it's interesting because I'm feeling that with your person their realization has been a journey of almost like going from some sort of inauthenticity towards being more authentic okay so I feel like this person is realizing that before they fell in love with you before they met you they may have been leading a more superficial life. They may have been used to people just accepting the mask that they would show to the world, okay? So almost like autopilot. I feel like this person was definitely just kind of coasting through life, very much on autopilot. You know, they wear a particular social mask. 
um, you know, they like to portray themselves as somebody who is doing really well, who is, you know, kind of, you know, you know, on a high, like just, you know, doing great in life. Right. But I feel like there's a, there was a definite disconnect between what they like to show to the world and what was going on deep inside them. And I think this person got really scared because you came along and saw through that mask. Like you literally were like, okay, all that glitters here is not gold. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you looked at them and said, no, no, there's something deeper going on here. And you may have been the first person group two that actually questioned them. Okay. So this is why for some of you, I feel like it depends on what, um, it really does depend on what, what reaction or what kind of, you know, feeling this brought out in this person. Okay. So for some of you, they may have been very shocked and surprised that, wait a second, this is someone who doesn't see through that, the mask that everybody else does, right? Like, that everybody else doesn't. Sorry, this person sees through, you see through the mask that everybody else doesn't see through. So that was shocking for them. That was surprising to them. And for some of you, this person may, that may have made them very scared and may have made them retreat. Like, oh my gosh, like she or he sees through me, like they see through me, right? Um, and so they may have retreated into their little ivory tower, right? Because this person definitely has the sense of, you know, if somebody sees through me and into my insecurities, if somebody can see, you know, the, my own lack of confidence or faith in myself that I truly have deep down inside that I don't like to show it to the world, then that makes me kind of run back to my tower. You know, that makes me want to run and hide and find sanctuary within myself. So this is where I feel like you know, for some of you, this person was really scared or triggered that you saw through them, like you saw through the to deeply into who they are. And for others of you, I feel like the fact that you saw through them actually was what they were waiting for, you know, and there's a different kind of like a, I feel like it depends on where you are on that journey. Like for some of you, this person may have freaked out in the beginning, but they realized that that's what they really wanted. They wanted somebody to see through them. They almost felt like the person that I will fall in love with is the person who calls me out on my BS, is the person who sees the true me inside. And yes, that is scary. Yes, that is going to freak me out. But at the same time, that's what I really want. Okay, so I feel like this person is going through a beautiful kind of realization of that, that, you know, you, the person who saw through them, who saw to what is truly inside is the person they've been waiting for. And that is you. So this is opening up a whole new spiritual realm within this person. And while they are definitely scared and it's like a new thing for them, I feel like it is opening up the fact that they, that they feel like, no, you know what? I can find love. I can open up and it's making them want to open up into this promise of this totally new type of state of being. And I think that is beautiful. So even if they're kind of going at it, kicking and screaming, which they may be, it's like, it's a change that they want, but they are definitely afraid of. So it's going to be a process, right? It's going to be a process where it's like, they have to become more and more open to revealing their inner self, revealing their true self to you. Because, you know, even though it's something that they want, it's not something that may come e that easily to them. You know, sometimes we may want something and we may be open to it. It requires a different level of change and it de requires more courage. So it's something that we may want to do, but we still hesitate in the actual doing of it, right? So that's why I feel like it is a process for this person. But they are definitely in that realization mode, right? Knight of Wands, Ten of Swords, <laughs> see? Yeah, it's definitely a painful process here, the sun, but see one that they want, there you go, see? 
This is exactly what I was just talking about. Sometimes we know that something is going to be very, very painful, but we also realize that in order to have love and in order to have the life that we want, we have to go through that process, that there is the sun is shining on the other end of it, right? King of Swords, yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> See, so I feel like this person obviously like they realize that, you know, there's somebody who is very good. Again, to me, that is what this this whole energy we were talking about with the Oracle cards, I feel is exactly kind of summed up in the King of Swords, right? The King of Swords is somebody who prides themselves on being very much in control. Um, doesn't let their emotions rule them, likes to put out a particular face to the world that shows them to be very strong, very in control, very successful, very organized. So, you know, it's not surprising. So I feel like this person, this is the identity that they have created for themselves. And this is the identity with, with the mask that we were talking about with this all that glitters that they feel most comfortable in showing to the world. But they also realize that with you, again, you saw through that, right? So yes, Ten of Swords, that's a very difficult thing for them. It's going to make them, and if it hasn't already made them feel like this is the death of that persona, right? But the thing about the Ten of Swords is that it may seem scary because it always has this image of like, you know, somebody on the ground with the Ten of Swords, but it's also very much about turning a corner, right? Getting to the end of a particular cycle or particular way of being or expressing yourself that wasn't working for you, right? That just wasn't working for you. And yes, it's a painful ending, but the other side of it, it is a rock bottom. So now the only way is up, and so, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this person maintains this identity to the outside world. Okay, so they may be like, no, I still need to, you know, I have a way in which I deal with the outside world. I'm going to keep it that way because it works for me and I'm fine. But when it comes to you, I feel like they understand that, you know, they're going to have to do things differently because they really very much have this deep desire for you, this deep attraction to you. They want to run to you. There's a passion that they feel for you. So I almost feel like in the outside world, they're still okay with this, but in their connection with you, they're realizing that they're more this, okay? So they may still maintain the image of the King of Swords in their professional life and their other things where it's like their comfort zone. But with you, they're in this Knight of Wands energy, very much about like, I'm going to be spontaneous. I'm going to follow my passion. I'm going to follow what inspires me. And that is what they're realizing because you are inspiring them. You are bringing out the passion in them. So they almost feel like this Ten of Swords, the pain of kind of of dropping the mask is hard but it is worth it because the sun is waiting for them at the end of this that it's going to bring something positive and it's going to bring something beautiful but it is going to be a painful process for them see your perfection your beauty amazes me i'm not sure how i attracted in someone like you but i'm forever grateful see there's something there there is definitely hmm this uh you know transition you know like yeah i need to drop this mask i need I, and i know because you're not falling for the you know bullshit <laughs> i still feel deeply connected to you but i won't admit it see so for some of you yeah this person is like i said it's going to be a process it is definitely going to take them time to admit that deep connection and work towards opening themselves up to it but i still just i just feel like it's this sun is a very powerful energy here and it's overriding this ten of swords so they, i feel like they're coming to the realization that you know whatever price they're paying for it in terms of the discomfort of bringing that mask down is still going to be worth it because they get you in the end you know i love it so let's see what actions they want to take next and what is Spirit's advice here for you as you move forward? Compromise. <laughs> See? 
cycles. Yep. And lessons. Okay, so see, this person is definitely learning these lessons. And I feel like for them, it's definitely lessons of the heart. Look at all these beautiful. I love it because this shows that your person is growing. Okay. They are definitely growing knowledge, understanding, look for the lesson in this situation. So I love this. And I feel like, you know, that's not surprising because the king of swords coming from this energy, this is a very smart person. Okay, this is not somebody who needs a lot of stuff to happen before they figure something out. Okay, this is somebody who is very quick at being able to decipher what is going on in their world. And oftentimes they are very quick at making decisions. Like they're, they're like, okay, I know who I am. I know what I want, right? And so I feel like with you, they are realizing that it's also better to pause, and think about it. Learn the le look for the lesson in this. Look for what is going to actually work. This doesn't require some fast moving like, oh, oh, I'm just going to snap my fingers and it's all just going to like fall into place. I think there is a sense of, you know, I've been through some cycles in life and as a response to those life situations, to the momentum that is already there in their life, they have created that king of swords, right? And I'm not saying that they're inauthentic. I just feel like they, they like to present a very calm or a very like, you know, measured um, persona in their external world because it helps them to feel more in control and more comfortable in their personal world. So I don't feel that it's inauthentic. I in, in the sense that they mean bad or their intentions are bad or they're trying to mislead anybody. No, it's more for their own level of comfort and the way they navigate the world. So I feel like this person, you know, in their next actions towards you, they are very much aware that they're going to have to kind of come out of the old patterns and old cycles that, that may have, you know, been also in their romantic relationship. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the past, this person has always kept the mask on in their romantic relationships because they weren't, they never felt comfortable enough or even intimate enough with other people for the mask to come out and other people, unlike you never really, really saw through the mask. So this is why this person is definitely in a place of like, they're being jarred right now, right? Like they're, they're just like, they're a little bit in a, in a shock mode because you may have been one of the few, if not the only person romantically who is seeing through under the mask. Okay. And you may have even called them out on it. Like, you know, like, and so there's a bit of a shock element and in that realization, they realize that maybe, you know, they've been in this cycle for a long time. And it's almost like they needed their true partner, the person who they're meant to be with, and I think that is you, um, to come and break that cycle. So I think they are very much in the realization process that this cycle is now breaking and it is time for me to come to a mutual understanding, right? Like I have to let, I kind of let go with you. They have to let go of that kind of persona. And it's time to come to a mutual understanding and it's time to kind of open up and say, no, look, you're right. This is who I really am. So here's your final advice from spirit. Take inspired action. Beautiful. So if you'd like to have a personal reading with me, you could do the live or the video recorded. You can also order any of the Oracle decks that I've created and used in this reading. They are all Amazon FBA, free shipping, and they're on sale right now for $20. So if you've been wanting to get these, this is the best time. Uh, you can go to the link in the box below. Also check out livetarot.com. And if you haven't already, please do give this video a like and a subscribe. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you all on the next one. My beautiful group three that chose the orange citrine and the giraffe spirit. Let's see, and Scorpio, Gemini, Aquarius, and Leo, but don't feel limited. That is just for some signs to choose their group. Let's see. So what are they realizing about you? Group three. 
We're going to start with oracle cards. Then we will do your tarot. And we'll also be finding out what would they say to you from their higher self if they could. That will be useful to those of you who may be in some sort of separation or little to no contact. And then we'll also end with what action do they wish to take next towards you, as well as Spirit's final advice for you just for this reading. So we have overcoming obstacles. You can overcome anything. Yin. Rainbow blessings, beautiful. Deception. Someone is wearing a false self, uh, wearing a false self mask in this relationship. Interesting. This is a little bit similar, a little bit similar to group two, but I feel like the difference is that this person definitely has been dealing with some sort of emotional, mental, spiritual, or even like life, physical life challenges that they may have not been able to share with you, okay? So I get the, the energy that the deception here is not like a what we would think of as deceiving. It's more about being afraid or being reluctant or being maybe a little bit ashamed or embarrassed around certain obstacles that they are dealing with right now. So right now they're in a state of flux. That is the energy I'm getting from this person. They may have some sort of transitions going on in their life. Um, this person might be either struggling in between jobs or in between careers, or they might have been coming off of a bad breakup or a divorce or some sort of a separation physically from another situation. Um, so there, there is a definite heavier energy coming from them in the sense that they feel that a lot of things are set in stone right now. If you look at this, like it just feels very heavy, like a big rock, stone, and you have the sword that's caught and it's almost like they feel like they don't have the strength yet or they're still gathering the strength to pull that sword out of the stone um so there's definitely some sort of an uphill battle that's been going on with this person they might have multiple challenges or issues that they have to deal with that might be distracting them away from being able to give to you and this relationship fully and i feel like for some of you you may know what these challenges are and for others of you you may not know or I feel like for some of you, like they've told you a little bit, but that you definitely feel like there are certain things that you just don't know at all. Like they're not really opening up about it. Okay. So that is why I feel like they are right now in, in a state of flux. So they are realizing two things. And I think that's what these two cards are showing us that what they're realizing about you, because look at this, I feel like we're getting these like kind of bookend energies here, right? Like there are like, these are the trapping energies, right? The deception and the obstacles, right? And they're kind of encompassing this middle energy, which I feel is the energy that they feel towards you, which is very, very positive. Do you see how these are like challenging energies? This is very positive energy. So if these can be overcome or removed, we're kind of left with what's at the heart of it all, which is really beautiful, which is that this person is in the process of realizing that you balance them out beautifully. Okay. You bring balance to their life. You bring love to their life. It's a yin yang energy. It's very much like a, uh, you know, like they have felt out of balance for quite some time and being close to you, um, having your wisdom, your support, your guidance, even if they haven't been able to fully yet tell you what's going on, even if they haven't fully kind of brought you in completely, whatever wisdom and guidance and support you have been able to give them so far is much more important than you may think it is, group three. 
Like this person may not have expressed to you through their words how much your support and you having their back has actually meant to them. Maybe they struggle to express that. So I feel like you mean a lot more to them than they have been able to express or say. The support that you have given them, the balance that you have given them has truly felt like a beautiful blessing in their life. And I feel like it's very, very deep for them, even though they may not be able to fully, fully express it. They may have a struggle in expressing that that sentiment, that that what's deep in their heart, because I think there there's also a fear that it's not going to stay. Okay, so I feel like this person is also realizing that they have to come to, they can't just assume, okay? I think they're realizing that they cannot make assumptions on what you want, what you're willing to deal with, that at some point they're going to have to just tell you, you know, who they are, what they want, where they're at, and, and have faith that your love for them and the relationship that you're building is going to make it work out. And I think that is the realization that they are very kind of slowly coming to. Um, and it has been a definite struggle because there's a part of them that feels like, you know, why would you want to deal with their issues? Okay. So if they haven't told you fully what their issues are, there's a big part of this person that feels like you may not, like what is the, you may not want to deal with it. Like what is in it for you that you would want to deal with some of these difficult life situations or issues or challenges that they are dealing with, right? So it's, it's a sense of like, you know, they don't want to tell you too much because then what if they scare you away? Okay, what if they scare you away? So I feel like they're battling their own inner insecurity about bringing you closer because they feel like, in bringing you closer, they might actually be pushing you away, right? Like by their circumstance or by whatever their challenges are. And they don't want to push you away. They don't want their circumstances or challenges or life situation to push you away. See, we get the world. Four of Wands. The Empress. nine of pentacles yeah yeah so i feel like this person right now it's like again look at this we're getting i feel like this reading for some reason we keep getting like obstructing elements on the outside and then how they feel about you on the inside this is the same thing again as we saw here isn't that interesting so again at the heart of where they're at this is how they see you this is beautiful. If you guys are at that stage in your life where you would like to marry and start a family or have a family, this is what this person is realizing, that they can see that future with you. They can see that joy, that celebration, that um, communion, that um, unity with you. They can see you both creating a beautiful life together, whether or not this is about starting a family. It's also about creation. They see the possibility for a beautiful life being created here. But here's the, again, here's the issue, Nine of Pentacles. There's something here that this person feels that they are not in a place yet in, in the material world to be able to offer you a lot. For some of you, this person's issues might be financial, okay? Or they might be work-related. They might be abundance-related. They might be location-related. Maybe they live too far away. Maybe they don't have the means to move closer to you. Maybe they don't have the means to get a job closer to where you are. There seems to be a fear. Um, with this world card, I do feel for some of you, this could be long distance. Again, where are you in the world? Do you come from different worlds? Does this person feel like maybe you come from two different backgrounds. This could even be cultural differences, not just geographical differences. It could be relationship differences. So I feel like this person wants to get to a point where they feel that both of your worlds align, 
Okay. And right now, maybe they just don't in this person's mind. So I feel like they have a definite, they're coming to a realization. What they're realizing is that there is a bit of a gap between how they feel about you in terms of them loving you, but then having a gap of maybe your worlds are not aligning. You know, maybe your world, your, you know, where you are, what challenges you face, your families, your mindsets, your way of living. There's some sort of a disconnect and they are afraid that because your worlds are not aligning and because they may not be in a financial or physical place to really give you this, what if they can't, you know, where is this going to go? How can they like right now, this seems more like a dream to them than a reality. They're trying to figure out, could this, which is what they really want, be a reality? And if so, how are they going to overcome? How are you guys going to overcome these obstacles? And like I said, for some of you, this person, it's like the obstacle that they actually have, or maybe the biggest challenge that they have might be something that they are not yet talking about. Okay. It might be something that they are just, they haven't yet said to you. It might be obvious to you, but it might be like the elephant in the room. Like no one wants to talk about it right now because they're afraid of loss, right? Others' opinions. I feel bound by my culture and my family's beliefs on how I should live my life. I'm working towards breaking free from limiting myself based on their beliefs. So see, this is what I mean. For some of you, to me, this is a confirmation that for some of you, there is some sort of a block from like family or physical situation or other people's expectations. And that's what is contributing to these worlds not aligning, okay? To them feeling like we love each other. The love between us is growing. I totally want to be with you. I, I would like to marry or commit to you. I would like to build a life with you, but where would that be? Like where is, where can our worlds actually align and come together? I think this is their fear. This is their fear that they are kind of trying to confront. Our love was too intense for me to handle. I needed to break away. So this may have gotten very intense or maybe getting very intense right now. And that's why this person may have stepped back and is trying to figure out how to make this work. Um, I do feel that there is a definitely very passionate and intense energy between the two of you. And that's why there may have been some sort of a uh, pause or, you know, we need to kind of, I need to really think it over as to how I can make this work. So now we're going to look at with these cards, their next actions, what actions would they like to take? And then this is your final advice. So what is your final advice spirit for group Three. See, unawakened. Release. Blessing. So this is the second time. Wow. So there is a, a deep, deep energy here because we got it twice of how much this person feels blessed by their relationship with you, okay? They feel that you are a tremendous blessing in their life. This love, what they share with you is definitely a tremendous blessing in their life. Even if they are kind of right now trying to be a little unawakened towards it. And the energy I'm getting from this unawakened is just that it's like they're not, they have to keep keep their eyes somewhat closed and their heart a little bit closed to it. And they have to kind of come across as a little bit unawakened because they don't know how it's actually going to work in the real world, right? Like they, they feel that there is a gap between the, the, the love that you share, the, the magnetism that you have, the passion that you both feel for each other and actually how to make it work in the real world, how to translate that love into like a real life. And I feel like they are re definitely realizing that they're going to have to release certain other stuff in their life if they want this to happen. Okay. Um, and they're trying to figure out what needs to be released. It's not that they want to release you. I think they may have to like either release other people's opinions or, you know, release other family situations that they might be in. Um, uh, for some of you, and this is not for everybody, there might be a third party involved. So they may have to release that issue or that other person or that other situation. Um, and that might be another reason why you have this world card. Like right now, your worlds are very different. If one, or, oh, I'm so sorry. If one or both of you are unavailable, 
um, in some way, you know, like either they're married, you're married, both of you are married, or you're in other living situations, family situations, some sort of other responsibilities or obligations. They're also realizing that in order to have you, because again, you are the blessing of their life in order to have you, they're going to have to release those other things that are blocking and keeping you, you know, keeping them in the state of lack of completion, right? It's incomplete. There's no completion here. And both of you are longing for that completion with each other, which is right here at the heart of the reading. Okay. So final advice from spirit, make time for self love. Okay. So if you've been struggling, if you've been very emotional, if this has been very emotionally exhausting for you, very heartbreaking for you, this situation, then make time for self-love. So if you'd like to have a personal reading with me, you could do the live or the video recorded. You can also order any of the Oracle decks that I've created and used in this reading. They are on Amazon FBA, free shipping. They'll get to you fast and they are on sale right now for $20. So this is the best time to get them. Also make sure you check out livetarot.com. If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe and give this video a like. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you all on the next one.